back everybody to the e4 rating climb today we're at 1200 there have been two parts already this is part three the time format is three minute blitz with five seconds bonus time and i'm only playing against twitch subscribers the first of whom is jacob badger 18 here we go e4 c5 what do we do against this the smith mora gambit in the style of forsen I see, <laughs> I see people coming in from the chess.com raid. Did that happen already? I can't even tell. Oh, Smith Mora accepted. Let's sacrifice a third pawn. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, let's sacrifice the third pawn again. Let's take it. Let's take it. All right, here we go. We've got two active bishops like this. Castling. Welcome, people. Welcome, welcome. Ooh, mistake. Why is this a mistake? Somebody tell me in the live audience, because I don't know why. We had this tactic in part one. It's because I can go here, as long as it's a check, and then I can take the bishop. We have kaboom. We had this against somebody who played the Scandinavian last time. Knight to, knight to g5 check now and queen g4. This is the danger of moving this bishop out here when it's got absolutely nothing protecting it. Because now that we take, he can't castle. Let's not forget. Welcome people from the chess channel. My name is Levy Rosman. I'm an international master and I am playing an opening inspired. I'm, I'm rated 1200 on the screen because we're actually doing a speed run. A bit of a speed run. More like an instructive rating guide. Hope you're all doing great. Stick around. Let me turn off followers mode. Welcome, welcome. Um, so I am smurfing, but I am smurfing officially because I am only playing the king's pawn against subs and I'm trying to be instructive. So this game was a Sicilian, Smith Mora Gambit. We saw Forsen play this like an hour ago. Shout out to him. Uh, he did great. And we've got the two bishops. What's the best move here? What's the best move here? I'll tell you what the best move is. It's this, 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 mate. Is it gonna come true? You think he's gonna go here and pin me? Now we wait. Big moment. We wait. Is he gonna... It helps to predict the future. You know, that's how chess should be played. And now his king is stuck completely in the center of the board. It's very rare you can beat somebody rated 1200 in 13 moves. I mean, we just saw like dozens and dozens of moves out of the Pong Champs participants. So if anybody's looking for a weapon against the Sicilian defense, look no further than the Smith Mora Gambit. The double Smith Mora Gambit, if you will. Sacrifice all the pawns. Uh, and then you get these really, really powerful bishops with ideas of knight g5 and so on. He blundered by playing this move. This is why you always look for checks. It's a mini lesson, not just for the viewers, but also for the players. Bishop takes f7 here with knight g5 is a very common tactic. Had he played something like knight g5, uh, sorry, knight f6, maybe I would have gone knight g5 to hit the pawn. Uh, I can have also taken to damage his structure, but luckily he blundered early and life is good. This is not quite the Danish gambit. I'm seeing this question, but this is where the Danish gambit happens. <laughs> and Wagamom is here too. Welcome, Dota people. Welcome, welcome. Um, I don't even know if followers mode is on or off, but enjoy it. Drop a follow. Um, I've been doing a lot of coverage of uh, the Hikaru tournament, his final against Magnus. The next person up in the queue, like I said, I'm playing subscribers today. Three minutes plus five second bonus. All right, 25 Papa, E4. The whole point of this is to give all of you a repertoire with the white pieces in e4 we got another sicilian do we go for a smith mora again what's up bjh what's up what's up another smith mora two in a row let's do it let's do it two smith moras in a row here we go does he take last guy took is he gonna take it he doesn't take it but this is not what he wants the best move is d3 we actually just saw who played this it was for it, this was th this was the game this was the game forson versus call me carson but this is the best move here just push the pawn in the center of the board. Take more space with the pawn, or get this knight out. It's a good move. 
I am not coaching Forsen. Um, Forsen is coached by the gods a little bit. You know, now I hope this happens. I would never, I would, I would never sound like YouTube Levy. YouTube Levy, who even is that? Let's give him a check. I can do a lot of things. I could have moved here, 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 or here. Half of the Pong Champs players would have played this move, though. Just kidding. Okay. The best move in this position is e5. However, 1200s don't play e5. e5 uh, is... The whole point is to run him over in the center of the board. Because he's pinned. But instead of doing that, I'm going to be professional. I'm going to cancel. You're supposed to cancel. Thank you, Goat Mama, for the resub. And now, well, this bishop kind of has no job, huh? I guess I can just develop. I haven't developed all my pieces. So let me develop all my pieces. I am not commentating tomorrow, Pog Champs, but I will be commentating on Sunday, the 23rd. They got me there on the holy day. Uh, yes, the mountain has said things like, you know, why... You know, why would I... Sorry, I, I got a message from my, my grandparents on WhatsApp. Um, let's bring this bishop back. Taking for the knight is not... I mean, why? There's no point. There's no point. So, yeah, Mountain has basically said, like, why, you know, if, if I'm going to lose all my pieces, I can just threaten to kill my opponent, and that would be that, and that would be... Saturday is the holy day? What do you mean? No, it's not. What are you talking about? Saturday's not the holy day. Okay, what's the best move here, chat members? People on YouTube, when I ask you, think that you give me moves and then I play them. I don't think that happens. Ah, uh, a lot of you learn from the most recent tournament. E5 is good here, but after takes, takes, this knight will jump here, and it will be attacking my bishop and my pawn. And that would mean that that knight is attacking this pawn, as well as that bishop and that knight, which would be three. So even if I move my bishop out of the way, you have three attackers and I have two. But I'm going to prepare the move e5 by playing h3, which all of you saw. All of you understand that the auxiliary idea to e5 is to play h3 and prevent anything from going to g4. Now playing e5 is still impossible because takes, takes, and the knight takes on d5. That's really the problem. So now I need to create another auxiliary idea. I'm going to play queen b3, which threatens e5 because that reinforces this two times. We're all on the same page, right? Who do I enjoy coaching the most? I enjoy coaching everybody. I feel as though with pod champs, you get so many different personalities, so many different levels of the game. Uh, and like I, I started my chess career teaching, not being a streamer, uh, but more or less teaching, like kids, adults, and so on. So it's, it's, it's always great for me to, to evolve as a teacher as well. Um, Rugby8 is trying to go B5. So there is a move here, my plan e5. There's another move, bishop b6, which really, really, really just... Uh, it glues together the position for my opponent. I'm going to go bishop b6. It's a very aesthetic move. Very aesthetic move. Because the queen is forced up to d7. The queen then has no moves. And now we wait. What can you do?
Oh, I had a live reaction to David Pakman's second game. David Pakman being a PogChamps participant, if anybody's just getting here or has no idea. Um, okay, now I'm going to go back to my E5 plan. So so really what's, what's, what's hurting my opponent here is the fact that there is no space. None of his pieces made it past that rectangle. What the... Okay, that's not a bad move, but he, he's forgetting that I can take his knight. That's what he forgot. Um, th that is how you can think about space. Uh, is, well, is that when you're so constricted, when, when you only are playing on three rectangles, and I mean, I've already broached, you know, this territory. I have a bishop there. I mean, most of my pieces are using five rows. That's really a problem for him, right? If I'm using five-eighths of the board, I'm using, what is that, 62... 0.5%, he's only using 3 out of 8, which would be, what, 37.5%, so he's got to do a little bit better, uh, or else I'm going to win the game. Now, here I can take, I'm up material, so what I'll do is I'm going to play bishop d4, and we're going to offer him a trade of bishops. That wasn't, that wasn't a math flex. I mean, I, I, I did get a stats degree, but let's be completely honest. I mean, a statistics degree is probably not going to get you anywhere in life. A stats degree means nothing without, you know, Python or R or some sort of coding. And I went to City University, which is, second, um, which is the second worst institution in New York behind Zipcar. For those of you that just got here, I hate Zipcar. I will say this publicly. Um, and I have, I, I will invest in a competitor that will dethrone them as the premier global car rental agency. That is my next project. Um, I have ranted about them on Twitter. Their bot responded to me a couple times. Today it accidentally responded to someone else, not even me. Okay, enough about that. Let's talk about um, my dark squared bishop. Uh, it's hanging, so I'm going to go back to where I was. Back, say, let's be safe. <clears throat> I, didn't I didn't play bishop b5 because he would take it, sir. That's why I didn't play bishop b5. Otherwise, you are a Like, here, if my opponent plays a5, you can bet your life I'm going to play bishop b5. He plays a5, bishop b5 is on the board, guaranteed, just for you. Um, all right, this is... Um, this is going to be good. This is going to be good. Now, the next thing I'm looking at is this, because I really like... I, I like forks, I'm not going to lie. Um, putting my rooks in the center as well. I have a lot more pieces here. Like, you've been watching the Pong Champs players uh, play positions where they have a piece advantage or a piece disadvantage. I really don't like his time management, so I'm not going to take that because he's just going to take. I will play my knight e4 idea. Um, he plays like this. Uh, let's bring this knight here now. One move threats. Remember, there's a five second bonus, so nobody's going to lose on time. Okay, if I go here, he just takes. I'm gonna put my rook opposite his queen with a big brain idea. Knight a6 is not hanging. Please stop suggesting moves that result in me losing material. He's gonna take and lose his rook. As I said, when you start picking up more on patterns as you get stronger, things start to come a little bit more naturally. Um, and that is one thing that I noticed. I noticed that, you know, there was a queen opposite there. Now I take. Uh, again, simplifying is good. Now that's a hanging pawn. Whoever suggested that move before, knight g5 is a, it doesn't lose a p, I'm gonna play it, there you go. Twitch chat just gave me a move, I'm cheating. Okay, that is not bad. I can go here, here, let me go here and see if he finds this. He doesn't need to move his bishop, he moves his bishop. Now I'm gonna offer a bishop trade. Okay, he only has a rook and a bishop left, good move. I can't go here, don't forget there is a bishop on the other side of the board. Defend the rook from behind. Very few things in life that are better than defending a pawn from behind. And other things, I suppose. My knight is trapped. But watch this. He can't keep getting away with this. He knows he can take, right? Well, my idea was that I have a rook opposite the, uh, the king, and I will play bishop check. He did trap my knight, though. My knight is trapped. I can't take the pawn, and I can't go here. That was a great move. My knight is trapped. Had he played f6, I would have gone here, and that wouldn't have trapped my knight. Um, but at this point, it's all about conversion. 
Uh, I, the next person that I'm playing is RFNA and Dexter Sinister, so you guys please get into live chess. Oh wow, we crossed 72k today. Amazing. Twitch and YouTube are very close together. Um, let's bring in the second. Well, you know what? We can bring in the rook. We can also push the pawn. I mean, I do have the pawn here. Um, let's bring in the pawn. But uh, yeah, I think YouTube's at like 64. Twitch is at 72. Those are very close to each other. I don't know who's going to hit 100k first. So this move is good because, again, I'm defending from behind, but at the same... Oh, okay, and he can't stop my pawn. I will make a queen. This is checkmate. Good game. Now... In this game, again, I played into... See you, Mapril. Take care. Thank you very much for the cheer. Very much appreciated. Um, so we, pl we played the, uh, the Smith Mora Gambit again, and last time we saw him take and I gave away the next pawn. This game, he gave me the pawn in the center of the board, which is not recommended. Um, you, you shouldn't do that. If you play the Sicilian and a good weapon for the Smith Mora is just to play d3. Uh, we actually just saw this in PogChamp's coverage. Just d3 here. Very, very chill move. Uh, and, you know, if I take it, at least I don't have two pawns in the center. This game really shows you uh, about, you know, the central pawn control more than anything else. And, and something that beginners need to not be afraid about is hitting a knight like this immediately. If your opponent gives you this opportunity and then they keep rotating the knight around in the center of the board, you just take space. So you take as much space as possible. And don't be afraid of losing pawns, that's why your bishops are there. Right, so, you know, your, your, your bishops, they cover these squares. So we see this in beginner mistakes, um, intermediate level mistakes. Uh, today we're only playing people who are 1200 to 1500, so this is something that we're going to see a lot. And I mean, it was basically downhill from there, from the opening. Let's see what this guy plays. Karakhan. Okay. Um, let's, let's see. We've played d4. Uh, we've played... The hillbilly attack. We get a lot of Karakans. What should we play? Let's play the King's Indian setup. King's Indian attack. So King's Indian attack with g3, bishop g2, and f4 against the Karakan. Appreciate all the subs, by the way. Uh, obviously, I do see you. Okay, this allows me to just push, which is... Um... Why is it called an e4 rating climb? It's not like e4 is a bad move. It, I'm literally making a video series on the benefits of starting the game with e4. What? So I'm, I'm, I'm bringing out my f pawn to support. I mean, I could have gone d4. But the reason why I like to bring out the F pawn is that when I castle, my rook is going to be part of the game. So he plays C5. He's not letting me naturally get D4, which is fine. So I'm going to play G3, Bishop G2, and get my king out this way. Uh, Knight E4 is a full blunder of a piece. Please don't suggest moves. Well, his name is Twitch Badman, so... Has Carlson come up with an opening? My most popular viewed YouTube video is Magnus Carlson invents an opening. But a lot of chess elitists watch that video. That's a joke. And people were like, openings are discovered. They're not invented. And I was like, I'm so sorry. I just wanted a catchy video title. Like, I really, I didn't mean it that seriously. Like, please calm down. Um, okay, now I'm showing the other idea. I'd like to play D4. Um, so now I have a big, 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 big pawn center. All right, very nice. We got a very, very nice position. This bishop needs to get in the game. Why do I keep playing with the white pieces? Exactly, I've broken the system. Well, that actually just lets me get my pieces out. Um, right, so I just, just go bishop out, develop my bishop. Now, I have more space on the king side, so I'd like to create an attack there. Maybe with pawns. Putting my knight there doesn't do anything. I can play a move like queen c2 with big brain ideas of going this way, but for now, I'm going to set a little trap. I noticed that his move 
I'm gonna ask myself, what did this pawn use to guard? Does he have any hanging pieces? Right? So when I go here, I'm going this way. That's what I'm demonstrating, is I'm trying to go to that side of the board, and I'm anticipating he plays h6, and I'll have to bring the knight back to the center. Right? So that's what I'm gonna do. He can also take... Well, he just gave me a full rook. I mean, he just forgot about the diagonal, and this is one of the reasons, before you make a move, just do a quick scan. What can my opponent take? And that bishop sees the other side of the board, and even though I did pay my opponent $20 via PayPal to play the move knight a5, okay, he does trap me. Um, well, now I should probably be very direct, right? Like, I should... Let's see if he sees this. Can I do a Greek give this series? I will do my best. That is what I will say. I will do my best. He's not really trapping me here because he's not attacking my bishop. So I can take, but I don't really want to give him the bishop myself. So I think I'll play here. And what that does is attack his knight. Now, he has a couple moves here, but I don't want to, um, you know, I don't want to give him any suggestions. How do you get into the queue? You have to be a Twitch sub. The queue for today has been made. I'm going to try to do a live recording of this because I'm also obviously recording for, um, for YouTube as we're doing this. Surprise, YouTube people. Um, we try to do this once a day uh, for the next few weeks up until I get to like 2200. That's a great move. That is actually a great move. Um, I want to open the center. I also want to focus on this side of the board. I can also bring in my rook. Let me just do this for now. I don't have to do anything drastic. Just let me get my rook into the game. My bishop is not under attack. For me, it would be a last resort to allow this bishop to be so strong. Okay? So, um, can YouTube subs play? N well, well, no, because the, the, whole, the, whole, the whole point of a, of, a, of a Twitch sub having the opportunity to participate in something like this is that a Twitch subscription uh, is something you pay per month. Right, that's like your way of supporting the streamer, and at the same time, you get certain benefits. But, um, I've been asked this before, and, uh, you know, my answer has been the same. So, now that I've brought both rooks into the game, so if you're watching on YouTube, check out Twitch. Maybe you like me enough to sub. Who knows? Um, if you subscribe for a year on Twitch, can you get a drink with me? I'll buy you a drink, sure. I mean, you gotta be normal, right? You can't, like, show up with one shoe and foaming at the mouth. At that point, I'll call the police. So, I don't need to take this because my queen is protecting my bishop. And then I will take... Um, okay, I will take. Everything is protected. Uh, so, everything is protected. Life is good. He should not be trading so many pieces in such a position. Um, my bishop is just... My bishop's hanging out here, you know? He's hanging out in a... Quarantining? Current events reference. Uh, okay, what? Wait, what does this do? He, they're forgetting. They keep forgetting about my pawns. I take this pawn. I'm now one square away from promotion. Now, what if I play bishop takes, bishop takes, bishop takes, queen takes, rook d8, king here or here, f8 checkmate? That looks like kind of a nice idea. Oh, wait, I just realized something. If I play bishop takes, bishop takes, bishop takes, that's a check. Oh. Whoops. That wouldn't be good. Don't do that. Okay, so here's my backup plan. Take, take. Take, take, check. My queen's hanging. Right, so my queen's hanging. Now you have to see the follow. Oh, there's also something very lucky here. So imagine you're a beginner, right, and you see this, and you forget your queen's hanging, and you move your king and lose your queen. You have a check with the knight, which attacks the king and the queen. That's very lucky. That's very fortunate. Sometimes that stuff does happen, but you can block here. Missed the royal fork? Did I? Right here? No, I, I, I know, but like, I don't want to take all his pieces. Like, I'm, I'm trying to be instructive. Like, I know, I, I'm showing it in a different variation. Um, I, I more want to show the fact that you can parry two threats by moving a piece. That's, that's the point, is that, like, don't get to this position, then play this move. <laughs> oh, man. I'm getting hit with kappas. 
I'm not sure. I'm not guys. I'm not sure they know what Kappa is all about. All right, they don't know that these Kappas are, are are happening. But I do feel them. I feel them in my soul. So this is protected. So he can't move his king out of here. And then rook, ah, rook check and checkmate. That's actually mate, regardless of where the king moves. Um, so we got a Karo Khan. I think we've had the Karo Khan just about. Um, just about as much as every other opening so far, like d5 and knight d2 is something that I played. Um, I've played in part one, I played the exchange variation. Maybe next time I'll play the Panov. Uh, I played the exchange with bishop d3, knight f3. Uh, Scotch, if possible, you please stop live requesting openings, dearest Red Robin 31, because it's not up to me what my opponents play. Like, if possible, Absolutely, but otherwise I cannot guarantee you what my opponents will play. We might not get an e5 forever. Dexter Sinister. Are we gonna get e5 now? Oh my goodness. This is this is only Sicilian. I mean I, I don't like what Okay. Well it's time to introduce El Favorito. A3. I have not yet played this, but this is one of the lines in my e4 course. And then b4. Whoa. I see. Why is he pre moving? I just go here. <laughs> this is. <laughs> that's the thing. I mean, you can't, you can't be pre moving. Um, this, is, uh, this is a delayed wing gambit. And I'm not really sure why he pre moved, because now he just got hit with b5, which is. Um, I'm really strong for a 1200 player. Yes, thank you. Uh, because now he's just going to get his knight dis- Oh, oh. No. So, bishop b2 is good, but if I'm not mistaken, d4 is also a good move to get out the queen, because he can't play knight c6. The whole point that you can't play queen d4 is that knight c6 is possible. I'm going to go here, I'm going to see what he does, you know, um, so I'll play bishop b2. Now white is just better, because white has more development. Um, and if he plays e5, that's not a bad move. Uh, so now we're gonna, I can take, but, th I mean, there's no reason to do that. Um, text my pawn. I gotta play knight c3. Block my knight, but... Let's see how he develops. b5 is by... That is a move. I don't have to take, because if he takes me, I just take. I'll just keep developing. Let's do that. So if he goes here, I will go here. Developing another piece. So now I've developed three pieces. He's only developed one. Another idea I could... No, that's bad. No, that's bad. That's too slow. So how do you punish something that's too slow in the opening? Let's just develop another piece. I don't know. I don't know what this is. Um, okay, castles. I mean, I've developed every piece, so based on chess principles, I should be better. And now what you do when you have played better in the opening is you begin to open up the position. Because the guy two moves away from castling will not be equipped to meet a central break. I mean, I can also consider e5, but I like this a lot because this is going to open the position for my queen, my knight, my bishop ultimately. So now we'll take with the queen as promised earlier. b5 is not a problem. In fact, Take with the bishop or the knight, and let me tell you why. Because if he goes here, thinking he's attacking my queen, he is disregarding my threats in the position. Um, but this is not, this isn't good. This isn't good, which is one of the... And there it is. He forgot that I have a check, and that check picks up a pawn. This is bishop has to take, and my queen gets out of danger. Danger levels. You don't need to guard your queen if you can attack something worth more. And in chess, we can attack the king... And he's already in deep, 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 deep trouble. Best move is this. Will he see it? Again, best move is not this. You guys are going to say, why? That's a free pawn. I attack the queen. It's not the best move because you're still negating your development. He needs to, at this point, trade the queen, consolidate his king, uh, and look for, you know, greener pastures. I will not be trading the queen. I've said this throughout the show and this series Trading the queen when you're attacking is a bad idea. He does play this. Now, you'd like to go here, but that would lose a queen. So this is my best move, I think. I think this is my most aesthetic move. It hits his knight. Queen is very nice and active here. Um, bishop is a killer. And I had to move my queen because it was under attack. 
Um, so my rooks are coming next. How are we doing, folks who came from the raid? Appreciate that 5,000 of you are sticking around. Let me know. How's your energy? Hope the music is good. One thing about YouTube, I can't play music on YouTube. It's quiet for them. They just hear my voice. But hopefully they like it. What did I eat today? But you guys get to ask me questions too, man. Live questions. Um, one second. Let me focus. Enough with all this eating. Um, here. No, because he just castles. I'll just bring a rook to the party. I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but I, I've, I've done this throughout. Um, I've done this kind of throughout the past few games. Yeah, I'll just get my piece of safety. Taking. Oh, taking is really good. That's actually, oh, I forgot. I'm a genius. <laughs> How could I forget? That's the whole point. Uh, you always look for captures because if the queen takes, you stop protecting the bishop on d7. That's, yeah, and see, he forgot. Now, I shouldn't go here. I need to throw in queen takes f6. Then he forgot that the queen used to protect the bishop, and I am just a bishop. That's actually why if you have a chance to pin a piece that is like this, you should do it, because it's just pressure on the position. Your rook is doing a far better job on this square. Some of you might say, well, Levy, you could have taken in this position, messed up his pawn structure. Yeah, but the relative value of my bishop right now is higher than his knight. It's stronger than his knight. That's just the truth of the situation. That attacks my bishop. I'm going to go here or here. I'm going to go here because if he takes me, I will take this pawn. I do have an Instagram. Real Gotham Chess. Launched like last week. Get me to 10,000 followers on there and we'll, uh, we'll be able to start doing the whole swipe up thing. I'll be able to like make it a brand account. I'll take this pawn. Real Gotham Chess. We are far away. We have like 400, but I feel as though, you know, if all 5,000 people watching, however many people are going to end up watching this on YouTube and the following. Uh, people have been asking me to get Instagram for a long time. I mostly have Twitter, mostly do my, my, my tweeting. Uh, but Instagram is, uh, is my next frontier. It's a good move because he's taking away the uh, open file. So, good little lesson. He's attacking nothing. Play h3. Why h3 levy? Um, because I don't want to ever get back ranked. So I have space. This move opens up the eyes of my bishop. Not from any sort of religious intervention. Bishop takes his best. Oh, I just got to 500? Amazing. Okay, I can go back, but the best move is this. Let me tell you why. Because you open up the rook, and because he hangs mate on the very next move. That's why bishop g6 is great, because it was bait. It was all bait. It was so he could play rook here, and I could mate him. That was all part of the plan, obviously. I knew that that was going to happen. Uh, <laughs> no, I didn't. Uh, it's the best move because it doesn't block my rook anymore, and I'm, I'm looking at the h7 square. And the way I'm going to win this is now that I've opened up the escape square uh, for my king, I will be able to bring in my second rook somehow and back rank. At the same time, my knight would like to jump in here, but it cannot. So you play knight h4 and knight f5, and life would be good. Um, no, I actually, I didn't think he was going to play rook g8. I, I really didn't. My threat was to play rook h7. I saw somebody was saying rook b6. Excellent move. Excellent move. You don't have a lot of bad moves here. What I'm really trying to instill is instinct uh pattern recognition how to play from the opening depending on what you play all right lippy j hopefully you are in live chess let's go lippy j e4 no one's played e5 against me and no one continues to play e5 against me wow Oof, two videos ago i played the exchange card con so this time i am going to play the panov the panov Let's play c4. And uh, the point is you want them to take you. I'm just going to develop my knight to c3. 
And he's thinking. That's good. It's good that he's thinking. So, night out is normal. I also get my night out. And what you're trying to do here is, okay, that... I think the issue with this move is that you go you go queen b3. I think you have to develop the knight first, but actually if I play queen b3 and he plays knight c6, I take on b7, he takes on d4, something is slightly off about bishop f5, but I don't remember exactly what it is. I don't remember exactly what it is. The headphones that I have are Bayer Dynamic. I think they're 990. Ah, oh, this is embarrassing. This is supposed to be me teaching you opening tricks. I think I can take. I think this is the point. Now, hold on a second. Maybe now I play Queen B3. I think this is it. I think I take and then I play Queen B3. And the point is that b7 is now hanging, and he can't just play knight c6. So you need to take on d5, because if you just go here, he creates counterplay with this, and this, and this. Um, do appreciate the bits and all of the resubs. I do see you people uh, trying to be instructive more than anything else, then shout you out constantly. Um, queen f3 doesn't cut it, because queen f3 only has one threat. So he takes... This a move? That's a very bold move. I'm just going to take with the pawn. So now my center is defended. This is hanging. And it's not so easy to defend, I got to tell you. So this is the idea. And then this is next. The knight f3. So this, th this structure is good. This is called the hanging pawn structure. Oh, I don't like that. I don't like that. But I don't see a, I don't see a win. Because check. He just blocks. How do we win this, like, instantly? Check, just block, nothing crazy. Also, check, just block like this. But then queen d5. And then if takes, takes. Should I instill good principles in the viewers? Let me just develop, because I think what's going to happen is this, 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 and then we're going to win. We saw this in the first Karak, and there it is. The weak king in the Karak Khan. A lot of Karakhan positions end up with a weak king, and now you just win by the virtue of the bishop on b5 and the knight standing in the center. I've won several games against players. I know they're 1,200 or 900 or 800, but this is, this is, this is super, super common in Karakhan positions, especially in trade variations. A lot of people blunder along this diagonal. And that's really the issue, is that you can take and destroy them on the light squares on the queen side when they're not careful. D5 hanging, I don't even know what that means. I, I'm sorry, I don't even... They do block their... Okay, so this move... I can just take with the bishop. Oh, that wins, because I have check here and a fork. That wins. I mean, knight takes was also good, but this, this is very easily winning. Not to mention the fact, I just realized something. I don't even go here. I just mate. There's three mates in that position. Yeah, so my opponent just loses the queen. And now you don't even have to keep doing damage, just castle. This is one thing that you need to understand. Like, once you're winning, you don't need to do anything insane, anything fancy, anything crazy. Just chill. Is it possible to get good at chess 1200 without studying opening? Sure, but why wouldn't you? You know what I mean? Like, there's all these different metas. Only do end games. Opening's not important. Do what you find fun. If you've got a good memory, you want to learn some opening theory, some tricks and gambits, or just some setups, don't make people tell you what to do. Learn chess the way you'd like to learn chess. Now, obviously, if, if then you're losing a lot and you're frustrated, well, then, then you need a structured lesson plan. But otherwise, just learn the game. Have fun, you know? I'm going to bring my rook again. We've seen this multiple times today. Just bringing my rook to the party. I'm up a queen. Um, going to, you know, trade pawns in the center at some point. Bring in my second rook. That's how we're going to win this thing. Uh, okay, now I'll give him a check because that wins a pawn. Check. I'm the best after Eric Rosen. You know, we're, we're all entitled to opinions, even if yours is wrong. Now I'll take this with check. I could have taken this as well. At this point, um... I 
I suppose, I mean, I can play d5, make a trade, hit the rook, check him here. What if we play c4, rook c4, queen b5, rook c8, d5 takes, rook e8, king e8, queen c6. I know you all saw that, but... Oh no, I hung my pawn. Oh, I'm so bad. Let's see what he plays. If he doesn't take, then I just add here. He didn't fall for it. Um, let's play d5. Saw somebody in the chat just write, I'm trying to copy Ben Fine. Go, listen, I get accused of a lot of impersonations. Um, I've been accused of trying to be a god mentor. Uh, I've been accused of trying to be a lot of different people. No one's ever accused me of that. Um, that, that is interesting. I've, yeah, that's, that's a new one. I mean, I don't know if it's, we're, you know, cause we're both, uh, cause we're both Jewish, but that's not really me copying, you know, I didn't really have a choice. I was just kind of born this way. You know what I mean? So, um, I'm sorry. Uh, really nothing I can do to change it. Okay, check. I, idea is to primarily trade, um, but at the same time, there is this move. Now I have this, and I had seen that if he plays bishop e6 to protect his rook from the pin, uh, I have a tactic called removing the defender. I will just take, and then I will take on c4. That's exactly what's happening. Check here. Check. I Do I have to take? Check. Oh, sorry, I skipped the move. Check here. Check here. Check here. Check. Yeah. Keep checking him. I am. I, oh, I'm impersonating Gotham Chess. Check. 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 I feel so bad. Folks on YouTube can't hear this music. Checkmate. That was nice. Little staircase. I mean, I could have won that in a lot of ways. If you're a beginner, the easiest way than winning with the staircase method here is to just take and absolutely nothing is simpler than making a second queen. Um... Okay, so this is the Panov with c4, big brain stuff, and we take on d5 and play queen b3. Keep this in mind, there's a lot of queen b3, a lot of queen b3 in these systems. And it hits this and this, and if he plays something like knight b6, that would have been the best move. Then we would have had to figure something out. Then we would have played knight f3, bishop b5, bishop f4, but keep this. Well, I'm Danish if e4, e5. I did Danish yesterday. A, B, S, F, yeah. Abs, yeah. <laughs> His name is a baby noise. Here we go, e4. Guys, I mean, this is crazy. This is crazy. I mean, everyone plays the Karakhan now. Did I really inspire you people like this? Let's play the pseudo Panov. Check. I said check instead of takes. Takes, not check. Takes, takes. That's not a check. Whoops. Doing my pog champs impressions. Let's get the knights out and the bishop. Bishop g4, bishop c4, knight c6, bishop f7. That's my prediction. This is my prediction. Is it going to happen? Oh, he blocks in his bishop. Okay, we've seen that happen multiple times. Bishop f7, knight g5. Let's just castle. All right, here we go. d4. Got to get the bishop out. Just developing here. Just developing. Isolated pawn position. You want to make sure you have breakthrough chances like this. But if takes like this, I mean, it's just a big trade. There's nothing really there. Um, let me just get pieces out. I'm gonna play queen e2. Wait, I just. What am I doing? I should have played queen here. It's fine. Yeah. 
People move too quickly in the opening. They they don't realize their opponents make mistakes. Like I should have played queen here and like this, and I just played too quickly and played this move. That's just a free pawn. You you need to um you need to see this stuff. Like it has to be there, right? Um your opponents will make these mistakes, even international masters who are talented and handsome and charismatic and not me, I'm talking about other people. Now d5. Because now we've at least aligned the rook with the queen. Yeah, I'm talking about Eric Rosen. Exactly, John Bartholomew. <clears throat> Update my GPU? Why? What's what's wrong with my GPU? I think my GPU is great. I think my GPA wasn't great, but my GPU is pretty good. Alright, takes takes. We uh we we crash through in the center here with the rook on d1. Rook d5 is a nice move, but so is this, and this is the problem with the isolated pawn positions, is that oftentimes you get very active play. See our pawn structure is the same. 3-3, three, 2-2, three, two, two, whoops. But the problem is I have such an active set of pieces constantly creating threats. He has to move his queen. He doesn't move his queen right now, it's, it's actually lost. And he's only got two queen moves, and they're equally suspicious. He plays the best move. Now taking here doesn't lose the bishop. Um, so here, this again is, uh, is something, again, like, again, we've seen this throughout the day, very active rooks. Does that hang material? Bishop c6, bishop c6, no it doesn't. Yes it does. No it doesn't. Because bishop c6, queen c6, queen e7 wins material. However, takes, takes, and if you take this, you lose a rook. Because after queen takes, rook takes, don't forget that the rooks see each other. And I can't throw in this move. Because he takes with the bishop. Oh. <laughs> oh. Wow. I thought I was winning here. Now, bishop c6 does look like it's winning. What about bishop c7? Ah, then just rook c8. Hmm. Maybe take, wait, take, take. Rook takes rook. Bishop takes rook. Can I move my queen and trap? No, nope, can't trap. No, nope. no trap got here. Hmm. What if I play bishop c7 and then bishop? No, but then he takes with the queen, and then I don't. I'm. I don't. I'm gonna play here. <laughs> Literally, I have no idea. Um. So, I could have played a lot of moves, but I'm. I'm gonna see what he does. I'm just gonna hope that he just uh, just explodes here, like his brain just explodes, like h3. Just <laughs> spit on myself. Embarrassing. Sorry. Yeah, big, big brain moves here. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I spent way too long here. You know, I, maybe I should have doubled. Maybe I should have moved my queen out of the way. Uh, I feel like I can do a lot of things here and still maintain a good position. This, I don't want a queen trade because I'm a gangster. So I play queen c4, which lines up this and this. So he, he was looking for a queen trade. Um, and I was not. That is not something that I was looking for. Are the lessons on chess.com worth it? What I always say is this, and... Feel free to discuss this in the YouTube comments. Can't wait to see that discussion. Um, if you are in a position financially where you can afford something like a chess.com premium, 
there is no reason not to do it. You know what I mean? Like if it's a huge investment, then you can consider free options. But the amount of video content for openings, middle games, strategy, definitely worth it. Like if you can afford it, if you can afford it. If it's gonna like, you know, if it's like half of your monthly income, because that, I mean, the financial situation around the world is crazy. Don't do it, right? It's pretty straightforward. So here, here doesn't cut it. Otherwise it looks like I win a queen. There, there. So somehow he's just surviving everything that I do. I'm gonna back up, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And I, I didn't like the fact that this was gonna happen. Now I have five second bonus time, so nobody panic. Um, to get access, do you need diamond or you can get, there, there's a page. I mean, you can use like, you can use this page and it shows you the differences. I have my own little URL. It's cool. Go.chess.com slash goth. But the thing, knight g5 I had? Knight g5! And what does that do? I mean, he just plays like knight a5, for example. It's a very complicated position. Very complicated. So what I'm doing is I'm just getting my queen out of the way. Um, it's not a bad move. I mean, if I take... Takes back... Trying to go here. I'd be very careful. It's a brutal position to play in time trouble. Very tricky. Uh, by the way, all this shows us is that the isolated pawn Karakan with c4 is just not very good. Um, it's, it's just the opening, we didn't get sufficient winning chances from the opening. It's a very dry and kind of equalish position. Let's play b4. This is the new idea. So now the bishop's going to go back. I would imagine it would go back. He's playing very well. Or this, I'm just hoping he blunders. No, I mean, knight g5 just bish- Ah, there we go. Not realizing the pin, and the knight has no move. It needs to move and- I mean, that was a tough game. This guy so far is winning game of the whatever, I mean... You know what I mean? Like, this guy... This guy's for real. Check. And it's, it's back rank mate, but I mean, I had to work my ah for that. Six. In here, okay, it's not a bad move. Let's play bishop e5. Seeing if he's going to take, he does take. And now the winning plan, which has existed since the beginning of time. Oh, he stopped my pre-moves. That wasn't nice. So... This time, I mean, I've been trying everything. I guess I will start to be more consistent against the Karakan. I played the isolated pawn Karakan. And again, the principles were more or less straightforward, except, I mean, here I blundered. He actually could have taken on d4, uh, and he would have had a better position. We are about halfway through the queue. Uh, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, eight more people to play. Uh, let's, let's go. We are now in the 1300 category. Finally! Is the guy that requested a scotch still here? If you gotta go, you gotta go. Ooh, what is this? Can't play scotch against this. Or can I? 
3d4 against the Petrov is very tricky. He could be trying to Stafford Gambit me, but he blunders. And, ah, e5. <laughs> That's the whole point. I will never make that sound ever again, by the way. I apologize. Let's play queen takes. This is the whole point. Really, bishop c7 last game was good. I'm not going to engine scan all of the tactics. Um, because it's not Im as important as the actual, you know, just going through the, uh, the openings. So bishop g5, he'll go here, I will take, he will take, I'll go here, he'll go here, and I'll probably move my queen back. Now, you also could just develop, but you have to understand that this move will happen. So, I will play bishop g5. Uh, courses, there is a courses command. I do have an e4 course command. I always recommend that, uh, the, the e4 course in any of the openings courses for about 1,100. That's when you'll start really feeling the effects and you'll be able to digest some of the content. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, there is no courses command, but it's in the description. Um, so bishop d8, he wants my queen, then I take, he takes my king. Don't do that. I don't want a queen trade. Um, let's play queen f4. Wait. This was better, because then I would have been attacking the g7 pawn. I played too fast, but it's okay. Pretty hard stuck, 1200 to 1300. What do you do? You transform your opening repertoire. You attack your opponents more than just developing your pieces early. Try to attack, put pressure on your opponents. I don't need to take, right? Like, if he takes me... Like, knight c3 takes, takes castles... Yeah, let's do that. Why not? Like, I don't have to take. Why do I have to take? So? I could, I could have taken. Long Castles is good. This is an idea, this is an idea, castling is an idea. <sighs> Queenside castle. F6. Let's take. I mean, there's no reason not to take. I could check him. But why would I do that? What am I, a hockey player? Tough position. I mean, if he takes... Whoa. Let's check him. Knight c4? Yeah, but then queen c4, I don't... Are we thinking? This king h8, obviously a logical move. Uh, my queen is hanging, my bishop is hanging. I have to make a move which maintains defense of the bishop, so it's either here. If you go here, you've got to be very careful. There's someone on the opposite diagonal, so d5. I'm going to play queen h4. I think that's the best move. d5 might have been a move, but d5, there were some really wild tactics that could have occurred. So I'm kind of glad it didn't happen. Some very interesting variations here. I mean, probably it's best for him to play something like d6 and, uh, and just, you know, continue development. And that's, well, what he does. I, I mean, that wasn't a stream snipe. That was just, you know, that was just a natural move. All right, bishop d3. Uh, this is an idea as well. This is obvious. I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm quite clear with my intentions here. 
Plays rook h6. That's not a winning move, unfortunately. I would have loved it if it was, but it's not. Uh, do I want a queen trade? I don't think so. Woo! Wait, that, wait, that's... I do have this, but let's not... Let's not hang a queen, huh? Maybe better to just not... E4 winning? Why, why is that? Why, why is queen e4 winning? Neither of those moves are threats. Queen e4 is not winning. It's not a bad move, but I like queen g3. What's wrong with queen g3? Why can't I play my safe move? Why do I have to play... Knight b4. Okay. Now we will do this. Again, the weaknesses of the squares near the king are going to decide this game. Now again, I could have just brought my rook. This move didn't attack anything. Takes, I just take. Takes, I just take. If he takes, I yell at him and then I take. Okay, rook d3. But the thing is, this knight was good for defense. And, okay, that's respectable. That covers that. And I, I mean, if I take, he just goes here. Now it is time. This rook is finally being summoned to the party. Um, and I am better here because I'm an international master. But not because my position is necessarily any better than his. Uh, although, that too. I think I have the more active rooks. Um, and my, my queen and knight are good. You know, my knight is good. So, I think I'm a little bit more developed. I also think I'm better because he just hung a bishop. He forgot that the queen couldn't be the one guarding the... Yeah, that's a mistake. That was good. Hey, Khalil! Thank you for the five gifted subs. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. What just happened? My opponent just had an aneurysm out of nowhere. What? It's like... It's like his friend was playing? And then right here he said... Yo, g g g I want, I want to try, I want to try, and 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 then he lost every piece in a row. Like that's literally like it's like his friend was the one playing the first move, like moves. Okay, I don't want to go, I don't want to go so intense, but um, that was so strange. So Petrov, we've had this before. I played knight takes e five once, but d four is a really interesting system to play against the Petrov as well. Uh, and you avoid things like, uh, you know, the Stafford Gambit, for example. Although the Stafford Gambit isn't so scary, but if you're not prepared against it, um, it could be a little bit, a little bit dangerous. And again, uh, throughout the opening, you know, just trying to develop pieces, castle. Um, I didn't, you know, you don't need to, if you keep your pieces safe early on, get castled, really follow the principles, you're going to be all right. Even if you don't know exactly what's coming next in the position. D price up next. Friend of the stream, we did a, a charity stream together. I think he's gonna play the Karo Khan. He does not. He played e4, e5. I will play knight f3. All right, knight c6. Let's play d4. The Scotch defense. Now I have played the Scotch gambit. I have not. I have uh, in this climb. I did play the open Scotch. I guess I can play the Scotch Gambit. That's what I'll do. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play the Scotch Gambit. I played the open Scotch once. This is the Scotch Gambit. You basically play d4, and you don't take the pawn back. Um, I will go for an Evans Gambit, yes. At, at, at some point as well. I don't get a lot of e4, e5. I mean, I, I don't really know why, but such is the case. I have played the Goring Gambit. Those of you asking in livestream, those of you watching... Uh, it's just that openings get scattered throughout the climb, and I, I can't always guarantee that I will play, you know, that I'm going to play the, 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 you know, the, you know, you know. That was my attempt at being Kasparov. Uh, let's castle. That is a good move. I was really hoping he didn't play that, because now that trick that I had earlier doesn't work. 
Because on knight g5, he has a very cool trick. Queen takes knight. I've been catching a few people today with this. Maybe I play here. Um, maybe I play there. I can also throw in h3 for now. c3, bishop, bishop f4. Play h3, ask him what he's doing. Okay. I don't think I want to do this, so let's play c3. We've had enough gambits today that hopefully you guys are aware of the dangers that can come from playing, you know, loosey-goosey a little bit against gambit systems. So if you've been watching throughout the video, you know that, or the stream, yeah, you know that queen b3 is a pretty vicious idea. Point being that when he takes on f3, I will take on b7. When I ignore his bishop. I, I don't know, actually. Will I take on B? Maybe I have to play FG6. I don't know. A lot of issues to deal with here. Not to mention... Why not bishop takes F7? Because he would take with the bishop. That's why. Again, these move suggestions, I appreciate them. But at the same time, let's not have me lose any material, you know? Oop. Knight a5 is good for him? I don't know in what universe. But he does get my bishop, which he could have not seen but gotten a little bit lucky. And now, you know, God looks down fondly. And I couldn't take, but. Wait, that's a mistake. Why is that a mistake? Since I know that he's going to take this on the next move. Guys, please don't make me lose pieces. Bishop takes f7. I know that I'm going to be losing the bishop anyway. And you can't just play under the perception. Oh, he's not going to see it. Yeah, he will. <laughs> like, why wouldn't he see it? He probably just thought that he could throw in this move. Ah, uh, if I check... And then I'm... Yeah, I like this. This is a very strong move. Uh, if he sacrifices thinking he wins my queen on the next move, I just take with the queen. No, no, no. Uh, after c6, I couldn't have played bishop f7, because again, he would have played. But, yeah, this way, this all works, and then I bring the queen back. Life is good. Appreciate all the subscriptions, by the way, today. If you're not yet subbed on YouTube, I don't really know what you're waiting for. Let's go here. So I'd like to break through, but I don't think I can. Instead, I'm going to get the pawn. Did I lose the knight? Horses hanging? No, no, no. It, it, it was protected. Now, this looks nice, but he just goes here. Oh. Ooh. That is going to be a problem. That is going to be a problem. His knight is trapped. Knights on the side of the board when they have no way in, you can attack. And it is going to be a problem. That's not, again, we gotta remember that's not hanging. Okay, he attacks me. That is under attack. I can defend it. I can move it back. Let's just move it back. Takes. Not a bad move. Let's take this. 
Yeah, four is also fine. Perfectly reasonable move. Okay. I like this move, just hanging around, putting some pressure on everything. Let's go bishop g5. We're pinning, so going straight for the kill. I guess I can take, but then he just blocks with the knight at the end. So, something we have seen throughout this uh, climb, bringing another piece. Wow, he is so safe. Crazy. He's so safe. How is he so safe? Wow. It's like a cocoon. All right, let's bring the knight. I mean, I don't know. Let's go here. <laughs> My knight and rook are sad. Yeah, they're sad. That's why I'm bringing them out. Mm-hmm. Out attacks my queen. I gotta get out of there. Here. Now he's thinking. Takes. Let's take with the knight. I like that. Hits the rook. Got this. Really not that easy here. Okay, that attacks. Take the rook. Ah, and here's a nice idea. When he takes back, I can keep attacking him, but this is by far the simplest move. Because it trades the queen. And if I can get a queen trade, pretty sure I'm going to win the game. He moves. Go here. That is not free. Bring in the second rook. Push. Bring the rook. Bring the knight. Push the pawn. Check. Take. Check. Go here. I'm trying to win easily. He's not letting me check. Free pawn. Hits this. Hits this. Don't get tunnel vision. Alright, rookie three we gotta play. Let's go rook. Check. Alright, that's good. The king on the back rank is really good. I really like to see that. He's gonna take. And we need to put more pressure on the pinned piece. And we're gonna do that by playing the move knight f6. Kaboom. Kaboom, kaboom. Life is good. Life is good. Now that's not a fork. Take. Uh, I don't know. I have a lot of ways to win. I'm getting information overload. Move the rook. I want a mate. That's what I want. It's not that thrilling of a game, but we will get it done.
Don't choke. I'm going to do my best. Very tough position here. That is not going to do it. That is mate. So this one took a while, uh, but the Scotch Gambit is pretty, pretty challenging. And we saw a lot of different motifs, such as D3, uh, Queen B3, for example. A lot of different weaknesses, like sneaking the Queen out to support the Bishop. Early tactics, very tactical opening. A lot of hanging pieces. Um... And then the Desperado trick. The Desperado trick was obviously, obviously huge. Um, so what we'll do is we've got, I, I'll play two, well, I'm going to play everybody in the queue. Uh, 